Right. Welcome back to another episode of whatever the f this show is called. My name is Phil Balabanos, and this is Peter James, aka the Time Traveler's wife. I uh, recently changed it to the Time Traveler's husband for obvious reasons. So uh... he's hard to light, but for some reason I put him in everything I ever did, and we made a lot of movies together, even having co-directed once. And that film was called The Economist, which I spoke about in the previous vlog, which is the one that's going to be playing at the Montreal Greek Film Festival. Oh, and that's why I brought Peter in. I know, like, I'll fix your sleeve for you. Too, oh, there. thank you. Yeah. If I remember correctly, mm -hmm. we had, it had been about a year or so since we had shot uh, Hashtag Sudocracy. Um, Fantastic little film. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> brought forth by a, 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 one of those, was it, 48 It was a hour call to film. action. It was a 48-hour yeah. film festival. And uh, we decided when they held their follow-up, uh, the year after, which was no longer a race, just call for for short film. Well, I know we violated the terms of of, of length of runtime. So That's basically, those we needed to make a five to ten minute short film, mm. and we made a thirty minute short film. Oops. <laughs> oh, actually, we knew it was going to be long when we were writing it, and if you remember correctly, we were going to do it as a two parter um, to try to. Oh like, yeah, yeah, to try and get both films <laughs> in. Yeah, both films yeah, in, yeah. and like, hey, look, we did a we did a fifteen minute short. But we did it two and, times. And then we did it again. Yeah, they ended up, what they did is they had the, sh the festival, like the competition, which we were not a part of. Yeah. And then we had they a showcase. Had a, yeah, it was a showcase, yeah. like and a it special was just showcase. Us. Yeah. It was just like, we had to put you somewhere, so. We went from uh, having had the first uh, hashtag Sudocracy at the Cannes Short Film Corner, deciding we wanted to tell uh, another story, something a little bit different. And um, the inception of Dichotomous was actually very different. Uh, no, it was called uh, The Tale of Nick Dismas, set in like the Byzantine era. We talked about that one and we were like, okay, the scope is just, it's not possible for what we want no, to do. No, absolutely not. And then, and then <laughs> no, you came no back. No kidding, yeah. it was like set pieces and like, it was like horseback. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, no. Like multiple horses. Like, like not a, yeah. like a guy on a horse. Like we could go, probably could have gotten a horse or yeah. just a big pony. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> or <laughs> a small <laughs> <rider>. <laughs> So, so then, then, <laughs> then the concept and the story kind of changed a bit, but it still had this um, ultra bleak ending, which mirrored um, hashtag Sudokri's ending. Yeah, and Sudokri has a dark ending. Yeah. yeah. So this is a movie that's okay. co-written and co-directed. My, my vlog. Hold on. Co-written co and co-directed. Okay. <laughs> and so what I find, which ended up being kind of ironic, but the title's called Dichotomous. Google what that means. And you really had these two, they kind of touch within the same uh, center with the, the core, the heart of the, the story, but wanting to take it in different places. And when you watch the film, what ends up happening is you're really seeing two characters go through that as well. Yeah, well, the, char the film, I wouldn't, I don't know that I would go so far as to say that I our would. relationship during the filming mirrors. 100%. I, like, you, you call that a happy accident? I just call that what it is. Like we had disagreements on set. We had disagreements before. We had disagreements before, before, the before set. during, after, during post production. Peter wanted like, I don't want to spoil the ending because I'm hoping people sure, will sure. Still come see the film. I didn't yeah. want to. I didn't want to give this like whole happy, hopeful ending. The thing I is, just when wanted we, it to have on, an I arc. want to say something. Sure. When we made the Sudocracy hashtag Sudocracy, we never lost the audience ever. It was a short film. Like it was, with the credits, it's about seven minutes. And honestly, we had them beginning to end but it was one of the first films that I screened in front of a crowd that I knew making the film, the demographic of the crowd, like we made the film for them. Yeah. Not for them to like it, for them to react to it. For it to challenge and, them. And it was so amazing to watch, like here it comes, <gasps> the gasp, the sigh, the awe, like the crowd was eating out of our hands, right? Yeah, out of the palms it. of our yeah. hands. And then the film that came on right after ours, arguably did the exact same thing but gave them this like warm, fuzzy, hopeful feeling. Yeah, it grips them. Sudocracy just leaves you feeling empty inside, which in well, my I, defense at the time. It challenges, it challenges the viewer. He knew that it would challenge them. What I, what I wanted to do with Dichotomous that was different from what Phil wanted to do initially was just balance it out a bit. Um, because it is dark subject matter and it deals with something that um, you know, will get, it still gripped people, it still got that, you know, that kind of reaction. I still think it's your most polished work. Actually, I got the best, one of my favorite reviews that I've ever gotten come, came from Dichotomous. I don't remember who it was now, but I have it saved because I, I use it in my, like, bio and my sure. uh, my website. They, they described my visual style, right? Because I, even though we co-directed, I shot it. Uh, like, I, I lit it, I shot it, I did all the camera work. Yogesh helped, obviously, like, he was part of that, but, like, primarily it was me leading that part of the team. 
and they, they described my visual style as hyper surrealistic. And I read it and I was like, I don't even know what that means. And someone asked me, he's like, is that what you were going for? And in that moment, I looked them dead in the eye and said, yes, absolutely. Which was a bold faced lie, by the way. Absolutely. <laughs> I, like, I was just trying to make it look, first of all, Good. The, the, biggest, the biggest hurdle at the time was the low light situation of the camera. The camera couldn't, didn't work well in low light. And a lot of the film took place in really dark environments. So to get like a, like even a partially lit image, we had to blast so much light on the actors yeah. that if you were there and looking at it with the naked eye, it didn't make sense. But in reality, it came out being like this contrasty, like half the film feels like, uh, I would say like just a very traditional kind of yeah. high key, like Hollywood three point light setup. And then the film just like slowly descends into like this neo noir, 100%. It almost feels like completely handheld. Like some one of the things that people kept telling me was, oh, you and your fake Spinal Tap documentary. And I was like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Like it's not a documentary. I didn't, it's a fictional film. Like I didn't set out ever, even before I brought you what I wanted to start trying yeah. to put together. I never set out to make them look bad. The film has to do with the Golden Dawn, right? The Greek neo-Nazi organization. What I was always trying to achieve, that was my main goal was, I looked at two factions, people that had like basically the same goals like at their core like to make sure that their families were okay to make sure that their country was a safe place where they could have a future and they were both on these two fringes and then there was a bunch of people caught in the middle and all I was trying to do was hold the mirror up to the right yeah. and say like look I understand what you guys are trying to do because having grown up in like an immigrant culture everything is kind of amplified like the whole point of this is that what I'm with, trying to say, with what you yeah. wanted to say what I wanted to push into the film was exactly that is the idea that if you wanted to hold a mirror up to them your original ending does wholeheartedly judge them the cool thing that in my opinion and just because i'm a guest on the vlog today i'm gonna say it was it's that not called the vlog whatever it's it's called the phil show sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh he came in with one concept uh, i came in with another and so we kind of got rid of where we, you know, mine was going where his was going. And the really cool thing, and I know that you'll remember this, is that as we really started to talk and write it out, we both kind of arrived yeah, at the Yeah, we arrived same at the same place, conclusion. I remember that night. Which was really cool. We were pacing in your basement. We're yeah, like, yeah. oh, yeah, this is so right. good. The creative process is weird, right? Like, it's yeah. not like you can just turn it on and be like, I want to be creative today. Most of my ideas happen, to happen at night. Yeah. Some of my better ideas have happened at random times in the day. I've written full scripts for, like, hour-long plays in, like, a like two nights I can really and then I've written shorts over the course of like six months yeah. and you you know like and there's stuff that I've started writing ten years ago and it's still not done I wrote my first film in two nights but yeah so we were both in that zone and at some point we just like I was in my you know lane and you were in your lane and we were trying to figure things out and it just started like whoop, 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 whoop. and then all of a sudden we were just finishing each other's sentences and at some point yeah. we came to a conclusion, like literally a conclusion, like the it's, film's conclusion. It's crazy, the same thing happened on 1501. The same thing happened the film after, yeah. And maybe it will happen again. It'll, it'll probably happen yeah, again. Probably. Dichotomous was a, a chapter in our lives that has since closed and uh, ever since we got the call to show it, I can't stop thinking about Dichotomous and how I never felt more like a filmmaker than I did when we made Dichotomous because it wasn't just a narrative piece of fiction. It's the last film that has my name as a director on it. Peter, extremely oh, talented, wow. extremely talented, lazy as f needs a kick in the ass every now and again. And I like to give it to him, but I have a baby now. Consider so a kick, there, don't worry, that, right. that hurt me, that cut me Good. deep. Uh, all that to say, we made a movie, it was called Dichotomous. It's still called Dichotomous. It's gonna be playing at the Montreal Greek Film Festival, March 28th at 8.30. It's gonna be sharing a showcase with uh, Return to Park X. I worked on the film with Tony over the course of three years for a very long time. Uh, I, I, I enjoyed the film, I enjoyed working on it, so Return to Park X, you can't see it anywhere else right now because it's not on CBC anymore. Right. Come for a walk in Park X, stay, stay for, for Dichotomous. Dichotomous. But there's a film after, don't know this guy. So three films, there's <laughs> going to be a Q&A with the directors, Tony's going to be there, Poor we are going to be there. Peter James, aka the Time Traveler's husband now. My name is Phil Balabanos. If you're like me and you like to press buttons, subscribe. I could use the subscribers because honestly, I don't even think my mom watches this channel.